Booyaka, booyaka! I should totally do the whole video like this. Geeks of the Week! Staff, thank you for the wig website. I'm sure I'll be in need of it one day and I'm gonna need some wigs. But more importantly, I am we excited to check out Cute High Defense Club Love. And you really just can't say that without sparkling. You can't. Um, Girls Monthly Kasuka and Cross Unge. And I apologize if I mispronounce any of that. But you, I trust your taste in things because you got me into Norigami. And I swear on the Bible of Weeb, I will not let you down some pie or wee pie. Also, me and Seth believe in the 3Ds. Dicks, dildos, and ding dongs. Jake, I am a gory person. I order my steak raw. I'm talking about mooing on my table raw. I'm talking about I'm going to name this thing before I eat it raw. But not again. I, I went too far. Why is there so much blood? Where am I? But really, Jake, I like your anime recommendations. I'll be sure to check them out because I might as well go full super weeb. Since Lulu has successfully influenced us to become weep trash, her job was done. So she's taking the week off. Miki couldn't be here for personal reasons and she might be too busy tomorrow because of work purposes to make a video. So we extra, extra, extra miss her. I mean, I could contact her on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I could text her, leave her a friendly voicemail, write her a nice letter. But it isn't enough. You think I'm joking, but it isn't. I keep seeing promos for the new Orphan Black. And who am I going to talk about it if she's not here? Who? Come back, Nikki. Who? Did somebody say Doctor Who? Oh, she totally would have appreciated that. That pun, totally. Before other geeky things happen this week, I was going to spend most of this video ranting about the Royal Rumble. But this is good. This is good. It's going to make me be more focused. So it's time for another junk drawer video. Then I'm going to show you my junk drawer, which is a metaphor for my crotch. Okay, I'm just kidding. On both accounts, I'm not going to show you my junk drawer. And it is a metaphor for my crotch. Let's start with the wrestling. The Royal Rumble. And let's start with the good. That triple threat match. Yes, I marked hard for it. Brock Lesnar is a beast. The way they're booking him is very smart. It's like how Mike Tyson used to fight. You didn't see Mike Tyson boxing matches to see technical proficiency. You saw it to see how hard he was going to hit somebody. The brutality of it. And that's Brock Lesnar. To put it in geeky terms, right now he's doomsday running over everybody. John Cena was also great. He's one of the most criticized guys. But that match isn't that match without him. Not a lot of people can stand up to Brock and keep up. And he can. But... The X Factor of the match, the guy who put it over the top, is Mr. Money in the Bank, Seth Rollins. Seth dropped a huge elbow on Brock. He brought out the Phoenix Splash against Cena. Rollins showed he's ready to be the next big heel. He's going to be a champion soon. Don't forget, he has that briefcase. He can perform in the ring. His mic work is solid. It's not the best, but it's better than most. That match showed he can more than hang with the main event, guys. He's ready. Now for the bad-ish. Going into the Rumble, I knew Roman Reigns was his favorite to win. But I wouldn't have been surprised if Daniel Bryan won. He's still a main event guy. Very popular. And then he gets eliminated so early and in such a clean fashion. And after that, the fans were not having it. Everyone got booed other than Seth Rollins, Dolph Ziggler, and Damian Mizdow. It's because you made it so obvious. I mean, the last three competitors in the ring, not counting Rusev, because that whole thing was kind of botched, was Kane, Big Show, and Reigns. Like, really? Come on, Big Show or Kane are going to headline WrestleMania? Everyone knew who was going to win after Daniel Bryan got eliminated. I think the fans were just so insulted that it happened so early. I wouldn't have had a problem if Roman Reigns eliminated Daniel Bryan at the end. It's just that he deserves to be in the mix. And it's a insult he wasn't. It's a freaking flare slap in the chest. I mean, come on. Respect the beard! The question is now, is Reigns ready? Short answer, no. Long answer, yes. It sucks he got hurt because he needed that build-up to be polished more. He has a lot of promise. Every year he continues to prove in the ring. As for his mic work, yikes. Whoever's writing there recently needs to be kept away from him 
as far away from him as you can. I said Brock is doomsday and they're building Reigns up to be a Superman to stop him, which makes sense. I am worried some fans are already starting to turn on them because they're calling them Cena 2.0. And at first I thought that's really unfair, but after I examined it, it isn't because that's what creative is trying to make them. And that's why I feel they're making him try to say funny things in his promos, kind of like Cena does. But no, so stop that. Seriously, I mean, it's coming out lame as shit when he tries to be funny in that corny way. And don't do that. Let him develop naturally. The fans were already behind him. Go back and look at his old promos. They weren't the best, but you could see there was a lot of potential there. And there still is if you let him develop naturally. If not, the fans are going to turn on him hard. If you don't believe anything else, believe that. Enough wrestling. It's time for some geeky talk. Fantastic Four teaser hit. And it looked really good. I was surprised. It has a Prometheus feel to it. It doesn't look like your normal superhero movie. And that might actually work for it. Like I said, teaser was solid. But I'm going to need to see a lot more before I'm talking to going to go see this movie. A lot. Now for some Ghostbuster casting news. Paul Fick, the director, tweeted out a photo of Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig, Leslie Jones, and Kay McKinnon. And other than McCarthy, because I know she's 100% official, it appears these are going to be the new Ghostbusters. I am stoked. I love McCarthy and Wig. I am not familiar with Leslie Jones and Kay McKinnon's work, other than I know they're on SNL. But I think that's a smart move. Pick two relatively unknowns. And I like that they're from SNL. That's a that's a good nod, seeing as the originals had SNL people. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm still a little worried because I've never been a fan of reboots and good rebooted films are few and far between. But still, let's see what develops. And Bill Murray should totally play Walter Peck. He would totally do it. Do it, Murray! Murray for Walter Peck. You heard it here first. Murray! And finally, do 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 X-Files, if you can tell I was trying to do X-Files, yeah. Anyways, Fox is in talks with Chris Carter to maybe bring back the X-Files franchise. No word yet if it's a reboot. I do know that David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson said they are down to come back. I'm surprised they haven't done more with that franchise because there's a lot you could do with it. I mean, it combines sci-fi and horror. It's one of my favorites. I love it. I miss it. I hope it comes back soon. I mean, yeah. And still no word yet if, you know, they might bring back Firefly. Forever hopeful. That's it for me. Remember to like, subscribe, don't know so good stuff. And I'll see you next week. Check out the other geeks. Fare thee well. If you're still watching this, let's quickly talk some comics that I think you'll enjoy this week. Batman issue 38. Joker. Like, damn. What? I don't know. Like, oh, I'm going to miss Snyder on Batman. I'm going to miss him. Thor issue 4. Thor versus Thor. It basically went down like, yo, bro, that's my hammer. To which the other Thor said, don't call me bro, bro. And it's my hammer now, bitch. Speaking of bitch, Bitch Pilot Edition 2. It's basically a mixture of Running Man with some Gladiator, but they're smashing the patriarchy. It's a solid issue, building up great, highly recommend it. And finally, Ghostbusters uh, Ninja Turtles crossover, the conclusion. The first issue was weak sauce, but it got so much better. It got so much freaking better. Who knew that marshmallows on pizza would work, but it totally did. It does. I love it. If you're a fan of both franchises, pick this up. You won't regret it.